until uh, a lot of our um, board meetings this week. Um, and is there anything that council should know about that is coming forward? You can go for it. I'll go. <laughs> um, uh, the main two board related things that um, I got have, have going on have been, um, uh, first of all, we've been um, doing some, some recruiting activities. Um, so Which I, one? All. Oh, a both of them. Oh, all of them. Yeah. Uh, so but what we did was we, we went to um, we, we resurrected. I was working with Don and and uh, uh, Mark Quintana and uh, Carmen about you know what the what the barriers were for um, uh, basically people from the Spanish speaking community, although others as well. What, what the, you know, the barriers were, and so um, we went to see. Um, uh, we, we started accepting printed pages, um, printed applications, and there are printed applications at uh, the senior center for any board. And it's on their you know display. Pick up an application here, um, and then. There are um, at e for all because they have have nine um, uh, Spanish speaking uh, startups going through their process, and it would probably benefit almost any of them to have a board member as part of the startup because it helps with networking and understanding how things work and all of that. So um, that's basically as much outreach as we got done so far, but it's more than done, and Carmen said, you know, start it little by little because the first year is not going to be too much no matter what we do. So we did that. And then the other exciting piece is, is that uh, um, the sustainability board has been getting seriously inundated with uh, anti EMF emails mm -hmm. to, yeah. Yeah, um, to the extent that it was essentially was taking uh, he all Heather's time. Um, to forward the emails because their emails aren't public. Mm -hmm. and so they decided that no other board um, accepts emails from the public at all. Mm -hmm. And um, um, so they aren't going to, she's going to stop forwarding them. And uh, um, they put some you know, limits on public invited to be heard and moved at last on the agenda. Mm -hmm. um, and that was you know, all that, that they could do, but. Uh, yeah, I, I find it troublesome that that that, that a faction, um, especially a mostly out of town faction, would take advantage of, of a volunteer advisory board in that way. Um, so I, I don't know. I'm, I'm sadly, one of the board members is part of the faction, so um, you know, that's the reason that we haven't yet to the board at all. So nothing else on the board is going on. Okay. Well, I'm going to okay. Let's see. There's a, on uh, the art public places. There uh, they jury last week uh, eleven sculptures, and I uh, had a conflict at the end, so I had to leave, so I didn't find out exactly what they were looking. But very excited about that. Uh, the uh, on uh, the. Um, the RCAB board, they're still kind of gnashing their teeth around the uh, A1 uh, issue in regards to that. And uh, in regards to the uh, uh, consortium of cities, uh, there's this uh, Jeff Calhoun with uh, uh, the uh, Boulder Labor Council of the AFL CIO and uh, Lauren uh, Baltler, if I'm saying it right, from uh, Boulder uh, City Council. That wants us to have some sort of take on a uh, minimum wage initiative, and I'm kind of state of mind till I talk to you all to see what your thoughts were in regards to that because I didn't want to, uh, you know, tell them yay or nay or full support or not. Because so maybe this is an issue that we need to uh, vote on uh, with council, uh, maybe a 
at a date soon so that I can give them, you know, our stance on it or what we want to. Have I spoken to Jeff to do? Yes, and just to, are you finished? No, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, so Jeff would, I asked him if he would be interested in presenting the whole initiative to council um, and um, that tonight wasn't a good night uh, and next week we're canceled so perhaps in two weeks if he could come and really explain what it's all about and so he's he's good with that so I'll talk to Harold about putting that on the agenda. Yeah, my impression, I, I spoke with him as well, my impression it was this was about implementing legislation that was passed in 2019 mm -hmm. and whatever that strategy is that's as far as we go with the conversation yeah and i think yeah so yeah he will be presenting to us i did a lot more listening than i did talking i just wanted to make sure uh, yeah so Sean, if you want to catch me after they were right up to the brink on that before we switched over right so and i think susie you did some representation of yes it as, yeah as well. and i, I do have one initial. conflict on the on the uh fifth when they meet, and I'm wondering if you wouldn't uh, go for me. Yeah, I guess, I, I, yeah, I guess, because I am the, I am the alters. Oh, alter, the, okay, alter, yeah, the should be. Yeah, I just yeah. have a conference, I'm taking students too, and it'd be hard for me to yeah. try to zoom in and, and everything, so I'll, I'll send them an email that, yeah, yeah, and I'll right. include you. Thanks, thanks. Shakira, you have anything? Um, so, Transportation Board meeting, um, Advisory Board was really good. Um, it was really good, except that they, there wasn't enough uh, participants on that Monday. Um, someone else moved out of the city of Longmont. Why would they do that? I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh, they didn't have a quorum to, um, you know, vote on anything. But Glenn and Phil, uh, no. yeah had uh the presentation of Jim, third, Jim Infield, yeah had the presentation of third street and all the um, changes that's going on as far as the walkways and everything and it took up like the whole table it was really big and we had invited to public invited to be heard probably around 10 people there mm -hmm. so it was really amazing to hear um to hear their suggestions um, their comments and then also of course their issues um, so they you know they were there to actually ask those questions for them and they were there in um, Jim and Phil were there to answer them so which was really really good um, I told them since we're down a couple of people on the advisory board we should probably be recruiting them so <laughs> at least for them to think about applying um, so it was very informative, and I appreciate the, all of the work they put into having that map and actually explaining every street that they're working on. So that was really good. That makes sense. Yeah. Seymour Aaron. Seymour Aaron. Yeah. My name's planning zoning was canceled, so there's nothing to report there. Uh, Historic Preservation Commission is about to go into their retreat with a week or two, and so they're finalizing their agenda for their retreat. Uh, they heard a presentation on 150 Francis Street, I think it's 150, uh, that, that's coming for us tonight. Specifically, we're having to do around, um, there's some sheds or outbuildings that are in the right of way that need to be moved or demolished. And so they are getting an update on whether they were at any historic value, things along those lines. And then they've gotten pretty much their final update on uh, the, the city and the developer of, I think it's a 7-Eleven or something, over on Zlatan, uh, across from mm -hmm. the Walmart, the old Mary Dickens farm, um, has agreed in principle, I believe, that to, so that the barn will be saved and a piece of the land will be dedicated to the city is the agreement that I've heard or that they were talking about. So they're happy with that. Um, but, you know, they still would have liked more, but it's gone back and forth a few times and so they're pretty happy with this resolution so you know because of the dedication of land and, and such to the city that might come before city council um lpm's meeting is thursday so i don't have anything really need to update from that point of view uh the pratt board 
uh, was, was appreciative of the that I put together for somebody that we need for action. Uh, not a Gantt chart, but it looks a lot like a Gantt chart. Uh, to kind of lay out the, the eight and five schedule, eight parks in five years, along with uh, the kind of update on the other, you know, seven. Um, so they were, that was a major part of the discussion. They continue to be highly interested and concerned about the backlog and, you know, what's in the queue in, in the out years right, that hasn't shown up yet, and um, how to think about setting priorities. They're also in the process of finding dates and, and uh, questions or topics for, for a planning retreat. Uh, the golf board, I will say they are today deeply knowledgeable about the causes and the effects of frost. <laughs> <laughs> Very impressive piece of data. I learned a lot about the causes and effects. Um, but there hadn't been much golf played recently, so there wasn't much to report other than um, the answer to the question. And uh, uh, Harold and I met with the girl not too long ago. Well, Jones did very good, yeah. yeah. I, and I would try to explain, no, but the, it's <laughs> but the complexity of, of the finances and you know owning debt and you know all of, but trying to make the right investments on behalf of the, the employees from time to time. But that's it. So I have a question. Quick question on it: Is the um, is is the future park up north on one of the eight and five parks? The future park over, over where Montgomery? I don't know, not Montgomery. Oh, Fox Meadows? I, don't, I, I wouldn't call it future park. Where the kids have the jumps. Where the kids yeah. have the jumps. That is, yes. that's, that's that is in the 8 and 5. Okay. That's part of the yeah. 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 So to the GERP, um, that is very interesting. I like being on that board, but um, it's very involved, and I think it's really hard to have a retirement fund at 101. Yep. in a year and know everything about it so um i was very uh interested that the employee who, who was there Harold, the, the one employee that was speaking i didn't know robert sitting where suzy sitting right here yeah i think robert. that's what he's done robert okay. robert yeah. he had he was a good representative yeah, for the employees because he asked a lot of questions pertinent questions mm -hmm. i was impressed that he was very involved with that uh, retirement board they should be happy that he's there so mine basically we're all about transportation and we are exactly where we were last time when we needed to hit them um harold and uh deborah johnson myself eric davidson Lindy geisinger and phil are going to have a a meeting a zoom meeting uh, to talk about partnerships for intercity transit i think i said this last time which is why nothing's changed we haven't had the meeting yet so um, we're also talking about composting. Um, there's a, a big discussion discussion about a compost facility. And what I uh, asked Marta Lochini actually yesterday morning on the call is that, and I read it past Charlie Caminitas as well, is that composting is something that our all of us should understand so that when the residents come to us, we understand that there are different types of composting for, tip, for different types of materials, different type of composting for food, for yard waste, for uh, the dinnerware that is compostable and napkins and everything else. And that um, when they say, I don't want this because it smells, we should know what type of a composting facility would help with that smell, or if we're thinking about down the road. So if you agree at some point, we'll bring it up. Um, I would like to have a city at our, our commissioner and city council meeting the next time that we have that explained to us by Charlie, or because I always find it frustrating that everybody knows a little bit about different parts and we don't really know the whole scope of having a compost facility. So education. So that, that's about it for me. I, I do have a question. I can wait till council comments, but it's specifically on where we are with A1 and who's talking to whom about what's about some options. Would you rather do that now or? No, I, yeah, I can do it now. We're just, uh, I have been brought into the conversation. Our uh, our commissioners are on board with, with a composting facility, where it's going to be, 
from my perspective or what little I know is that the county has the dollars to build it. Um, there's different pieces of land that we could look at, but Harold brought up a great uh, idea, which I'm going to run past to Ashley Stokes for this out. A1 doesn't have the facility to compost every type of compostable. So possibly, instead of building a new one, could we partner with A1 and expand their facility? So I'm going to run that past them. There are several ideas that to my understanding, the county has nine million dollars plus, yeah. based on, from that, that's accrued from the sustainability tax. Um, and they that, can build whatever it is. In the interim, um, I just was curious whether or not municipalities or municipalities with county uh, commissioners had had any conversation about what we could do together, either to cover the cost of hauling forty tons of, of stuff that they couldn't compost or. You know, that was contained for containers. It's going to go to the landfill, right? Exactly, and that that is why. I'm sorry to interrupt. Well, if, so the, so if it's going to end up in the landfill, it's going to get in the landfill whether it goes from my house or from a one, right? Um, and it just seems to me that um, the unlearning that we're going to ask our residents to do <laughs> right now, when the time comes for them to relearn or to readapt, uh, that that is going to be a much steeper or it's going to be a lagging adoption curve and it just if we could if we can make a deal among the municipalities with our county commissioners to say to a one we'll cover the cost we'll collaborate to, and, and the county has the money to haul that stuff away and, and keep sending even the stuff that you know they have to sort out if it's getting up in the landfill anyway mm -hmm. let's continue to work on adopt the are adoption you, are you talking about an interim yeah, and in, 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 in uh, the plan, right? And that's um, rather that was, than taking steps backwards. That that's my concern that we're gonna the cynics out there are gonna laugh and point their finger or shake their finger and say we told you, and the ones that were late adopters are gonna go I'm not gonna do this again. I mean I, I, that, that's yeah. my concern. It's just when we were at a stage where we thought maybe yeah. we could get them yeah. the more people to come on with this. Yeah. yeah, and thanks for bringing that up because that was the, my second ask of Marta. What you mean is that. Also, when we're learning about what composting facilities do, um, let's co let's have the conversation about just what you brought up, different ideas together, instead of having it be like the Rainbow Nursery was, where yeah. it just exploded on us and nobody really knew what was going on. So I think education, open discussion makes more sense before we have any type of uh, decision making. So I think as Charlie uh, continues to research this and Bob Allen and Harold and and Ashley Stoltzman and um, she and I are going to set up a meeting with her name is Lori Stane, which is the Wales County Commissioner who is semi interested. <laughs> yeah. But it's worth reaching out. Yeah. And, and I think commissioner to commissioner is a better idea than. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. So, she is, Lori is meeting with A1. Oh, uh, she is? I think Bob sent that out to me. Right. And, um, commissioner Sanders. Mm -hmm. And I also suggested to the mayor and Tim, when he got to it on it, is if the county commissioners could reach out to the Larimer County commissioners and others, mm -hmm. because I think there's there's an operational savings that because we're all having this issue. Mm -hmm. Everybody um, uses it. Every, everyone uses it. We're all in the same position. It's not like there's not money to pay to keep people in this process and still haul the stuff away. It was going to end up in the anyway. Right, and buy some time to figure out how to help with that technology, become stakeholders, and exactly. one or whatever you know, whatever the options are. Or the discussion, yeah. yeah. So, so has not uh, a one already said that they have room to place a digester without tearing down their open window facility now, so that they can convert over? I think that's that. That would be one of the first things we would want to know. 
I think they have the I think it's an economics issue too. It's an economics issue. Well, yeah, and it's cost. But, and but if we built the digester, it wouldn't be an economics issue. It would just be a space issue. That's kind of the suggestion I've made to the folks that have talked to me. Mm -hmm. I think there's a desire for Boulder County to say, oh, we want it in Boulder County. But my point is, if you already have the site where the land use is determined, at what point does it make sense to just try to invest in it, be a partner? It gives you control over time. You don't have to deal with the land use issues. And you're augmenting their operation. Um, and that's where I've said to the council members that have talked to me, that's where I think the county commissioners really need to engage. Yes. And Bob and Charlie and I have all been saying the commissioners need to engage in this conversation and develop the partnerships with multiple counties and um, we're not sure where that's going to go. Anyway. And you made a good point, though, Carol, also when you were talking to me is that all of these cities and counties have already been, they're used to going to Avon. Right. They, they won't have to change their uh, the way they function if, if we just invest in Avon mm -hmm. instead of rerouting those trucks to someplace else and trying to figure out if uh, you know, if you're going to have any Indianism or how to deal with that. Last time the community tried this, it went so well. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> well, that's why I. Do you want to do it again? That's why we want to have conversations yeah. before they decide for us yeah. what's going to happen. So. I also made the recommendation to Bob and Charlie to go to the other group. So when I worked in Texas, there was a called Texas Disposal Systems and they actually went as far west as Alpine almost to, to Waco down south of San Antonio they had this massive recycling um, facility and then they were composting to organics they actually bridged the transportation gap by creating um, transfer stations so if you're in Fort Collins or you know it may be that we have a transfer station Let's say on the, the distal property that's waterfront, it has the waterfront. It's in there really for a short period of time, it's trucked out. And so they've actually cracked the transportation code by using these transfer stations so that not everyone's having to drive them all the way out there. And that could be an augmentation to the A1 side. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. So, um, Part of the issue with going to A1 has always been the carbon footprint of hauling. But we're carrying 40% of the methane we produce for our garbage fleet, or is it the other way around? We're using 40% for 60%. Anyway, we can use, you know, fuel cell trucks to reduce the carbon footprint of going out there, and that will probably have a whole lot fewer permitting problems than building a compost facility in Boulder County. Yeah, all those are good discussions. So if that's it, um, let's get started uh, on the ethics. I think everybody, did you get it? The, uh, kind of the makeup of what I think that we should be doing, and, um, While you're logging in, I haven't given my report yet. Oh my god! <laughs> I was my, go for it. Yeah, well, my computer decided to restart itself, and so I had to wait for it to get back on. Anyways, Susie, so, can you give us yours? Yes. Um, so I just have the museum advisory board and the library have logged in um, so far, and the. Museum was just giving us updates. There's a lot of partnership between them and um, Art in Public Places. Oh. And so there is a new installation, the Angel's Wings um, in the atrium. So it, it's beautiful. I saw it um, yesterday when I was there. And, um, and so, and then the um, mural um, at the spoke on the breezeway, uh -huh. it's going to be a, um, I guess, you know, mold, um, when it has multi uh, medium. Mm -hmm. um, but this mural, it'll have a QR code that you'll be able to scan and it'll cause something to happen. I don't know, a light display or some kind of display. So it's pretty, it was pretty neat. So I thought that was a fun thing to, to share. The QR um, code is up. It's, not it's already up? Okay, I'll have to go check it out. Thank you. 
and um, and the other was really talking about expanding the um, their camps or programs. They awarded seventy three scholarships for their children's camps, so that was that was uh, that was good. Um, and then eliciting volunteer volunteers, so far they have ten to help with the, the summer camp. The library. Um, meeting was more you know we were they were asking a lot of questions around the uh, the survey and um, you know, I commend um, John and um, that was named escaping he's sitting right next to me for three hours <laughs> um, our parks guy Jeff. Jeff. <laughs> <Pretty stiffy. laughs> yes no he, they were they were on top of it and they answered a lot of really really good questions and they had a lot of information as well um, one of the things that they're looking at, and it sounds like it would have to create a code change, but looking at their bylaws, I don't know if that's something that they could do on their on their own, but updating their bylaws and, and what, what are their goals and objectives as far as a, a, an advisory board. And so I don't know if Jeff will come to you, but um, I don't know, what's that? Council has to do that. So council via the ordinance is creating the board to uh -huh. establish what their roles are. So okay. that's a, so as they look at their their bylaws more and kind of have an idea, this might be something that I'll bring bring back for the session and see where where everybody's at with that. Um, I know that they were looking at depth in what the um, tax initiative would would fund for the the library, which is essentially that branch, the capital. But they were looking at just really wanting to delve in and having guarantee that we will adequately fund the library to attain that preferred level of service. And so there was a lot of discussion around that, around what, what that looks like. But um, and I think you know, just wanting to make sure that there's a commitment from the city that, that we, we're prioritizing our, you know, I'd like to call it social infrastructure because it's not just the library also the museum or parks um, so a lot of the comments on the survey mm -hmm. uh, were along those lines mm -hmm. first people did not understand that the sales tax was, tax was meant to be the operational expenses of the facility they uh -huh. didn't seem to get that but I think it would be good before we decide what to refer, mm -hmm. um, to have presentations on how the size of the sales tax were um, mm -hmm. determined, because that would answer the library board's yes. questions. Yeah. So uh, no, I wanted to to share share that that piece with you all. I know that they were interested. Some of the members were interested in coming to public invited to be heard to ask you know for that commitment to to further fund. And, um, you know, something that kind of came to mind is I was concerned that the public would, and I said, you know, you can do whatever, whatever you want, I'm not telling you no, but also keep in mind that, you know, just from my own experience of being on council, is people convolute the two ideas together if they both have to do with the library, that they're talking about one funding source and then a separate funding source, they might convolute the two together. Um, and um, Jeff had also um, stated that as, as well. So. Um, you know, so we might have people coming to speak on, on behalf of that, or, or they might decide to, to wait. Um, so they do want to yeah. come forward. So that was all. So staff going to be there during the, um, okay. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things that we will talk about is um, when you look at the balkanization of taxes, mm -hmm. uh, there, there is a significant downside in that what we've seen where we have it, we've seen it more so in the public safety fund, is that when you have a sales tax decrease, um, what it did is it pinches that fund and you can't, so there's two pieces. A, when you dedicate it in that funding source and you have to cut, you can't balance that fund out. The other side is, is when it's dedicated, the more dedicated funds you have, and you're trying to balance that in the remaining part of the general fund, it pinches there too, which makes it harder to manage those budget shortfalls. And so we can talk at 30,000 feet on that, but that is something, depending on what you say, we'll have to bring back because um, there are some unintended consequences. 
when you say this decrease in the sales tax, you mean sales tax revenues, not rates. Yeah, yeah, the rates, yeah. So let's just say you go into another OA, and if it's dedicated and you're predicting operational expenses on that, there's no way to cover it within those specific dedication, dedicated pieces, and you really can't cover it because you're also going to have fewer areas to balance it out in the broader general fund. And so it starts pinching everything pretty hard. This may be a question for out there, but what was the staff's expectation uh, in, in terms of the design of, of the things that could go on the ballot with respect to that? So I think what Jim and I were working with some language, but basically saying, here's what we're going to try to do, but in the event of a, of a downturn, you can balance the system. So you do have more flexibility. Um, so it's a TBD, but there are ways to deal with it. We think so we to say, to here's what we're going to do, but in the event, theoretically, and we don't have a graph, but in the event of an economic downturn, I forgot the language that we had, but basically you can cut the services that are there. Unlike the public safety fund where it can only be used for new services, you, you can't necessarily make that cut. And so we were working, you remember we were up there talking about yeah. this, and I can't remember what we decided, but I think there are ways to solve it. It's just not as simple as dedicate this funding because there will be a pinch. It's not if, there will be. And I'm sure you can minimize that. So. Okay. Are there any other big points? Okay, thanks. Um, so this discussion tonight is uh, brought by uh, Tim and Aaron on so what? So what are the, uh, what does the enforcement look like? What is um, what does bringing a complaint look like? And in what I sent out to you, I just put out put down some talking points. In my um, this was all cut and pasted by the way. It's not my it's not my actual thoughts because I don't want my thoughts to be the one that decides the discussion. But the one thing that I do want to keep in mind is that. Um, the difference between ethics, morals, and decorum, they're very different. And uh, morals are what you personally, internally uh, use for your conduct, for your ethical rules. Ethics external are external, which means that there are specific things written down that uh, with a committee, a group, uh, uh, organization, they're written down, they're explicit. So um, that is what I think that we should be addressing. What is the procedure for a complaint? And once it comes, or if it's decided that it comes back to council, what, so what? So what do we do with that? What is the enforcement? So the things that I looked at were, what we have here in our city now is Censure. We, we can only censure. We are a self-policing body, and we have the ability to censure. We do not have the ability to recall. But uh, according to Robert's Rules of Order, if we have an outside board or uh, council or whatever you want to call it, we can give them the authority to recall um, if, if that is what this group would desire to do. So, um, you know, I put uh, the issues from Denver, from what our city charter says, uh, and I don't know if you read that. Do you want me to read it to you? Do you? What, what our city it? charter says? Well, our city, yeah, city charter says, the council or a committee, board, whatever, duly or authorized by it, by council, shall have the power to in investigate the official acts and conduct of any officer, an officer being a council person, or employee of the city, and may compel the attendance and testimony of witnesses and the production, production of books and documents. In other words, whatever you can to make, a, to make the case either for or against. 
the council has the right to do that. Um, but what Robert's Rules of Order says, basically, from the way I interpret it, is that they recommend that the council or whatever group it is have an outside group look at a complaint or an ordinance. So let me read it and see if that's what you, how you interpret that. Robert's Rules of Order says, if members commit offenses outside a meeting, the procedure is to initiate action by in introducing a main motion authorizing an investigating committee or board. The motion should not make charges, but only present the problem that merits investigation. If the motion is adopted, the committee should discreetly conduct a thorough investigation, including a conference with the accused. So the, these are the recommendations that I found to bring forth for you to consider. And then there are some sanctions from some of the other cities. So my question is, Joan, that it sounded like you said that this committee that, that rules of order refers to um, has a providence, you know, that, that it exists somehow, but the piece that you read didn't say anything about that. The committee, you could, I couldn't tell whether the committee was formed on the spot or oh, it doesn't it, say that. Yes, okay. No, yeah, it doesn't say either way. No. Okay. No, and that's not what I meant. That's why I read it. <laughs> so I just. So, uh, you know, oh, I have okay, I have a question. Uh, so, I'm sorry. I was just trying to kind of thinking out loud you know, yes. because the last time we had a recall in, in the city was probably the late 80s, uh, early 90s. Basil Irwin was directing staff outside the, the uh, city manager to do things, but it was the community members that found it offensive and then brought recall mm -hmm. against him. Uh, and that was the only successful recall that I've ever heard of uh, in the city's, you know, history that has happened. So my my concern is uh, when somebody does something, you know, like uh, in Boulder Valley, we're all being trained on Title IX issues right now because of the uh, uh, stuff that's happened at a couple of our high schools. And so in turn, we've had this, everybody's required to go through an online training where they can have to document uh, their, their, you know, testing on it, knowledge of it, everything like this, and they the videos and everything. And some of that stuff is what I kind of feel is maybe the sort of thing that gets gets a, a person's ethically, uh, you know, in uh, in trouble because they, and, and I suppose there's this the quorum side of it too that is there, but the issue that I see is that wouldn't some of those things be headed off if we first made sure that somebody had something like this in place? Uh, and uh, we have plenty of examples from St. Brandon or Boulder Valley that you know are now aware of it and have the resources that they can pro uh, they can provide us uh, that uh, you know some third party has has vetted and created. So it's not like the district itself is creating it. So uh, it probably is something that that somebody you can literally buy uh, to, to to advise your your staff. Uh, you know on ethical behavior, foreign behavior, and stuff like that, and which would be some of the things that maybe somebody would get in trouble with uh, and would be on this. You know, it's it's besides the idea of talking uh, to accidentally, you know, send a uh, return all or some sort of thing like that when people don't, you know, aren't really trying to, to create problems. Uh, you know, when I served before, we were at CML and, uh, the council directed the mayor to vote on some uh, some legislation that CML wanted our input on. That uh, then uh, uh, we were, uh, you know, we had we felt we had public support on, and the mayor went and voted completely and totally against what we had recommended. Mm -hmm. And I caught him on it. And in this case here, we probably that would have been an issue. Yeah. So, what so. I, I'm a little confused about what you're saying is 
are you saying that we that should sort of, adopt some what somebody already has put in place? I think I think we should uh, strengthen our our HR uh, uh, criteria even for council members to have some sort of training yearly just to make sure that they are aware of it. That would be the first thing instead of putting an ordinance, which would just be a good housekeeping thing that would protect Harold and, and everybody else in the in the uh, in the system. Uh, and all the employees, and I think that uh, that uh, some of the issues that uh, would come out of a of an ethics committee uh, out of an ethics commission, how often would we use it? I, I don't know. Uh, I, I, that's my biggest worry. That how often would we use it? I understand when we have our police standards board, they use it quite often. Having served on that and knowing that, but that's also a personnel matter, uh, and so we had to go in and. Look at the personnel uh, you know, file and read over it, and and, uh, and then read over the circumstances of the situation and determine uh, as a group afterwards what was that. But that probably happens more often in that setting. So and that's why they have it. Sean, are you saying that you don't think we should do this? I'm not uh, certain yes. that we should. Okay, I'm, yes, I'm not certain that we should. I'm just concerned how uh, how uh, would it be uh, weaponized later by some future uh, council or mayor in a way that would would really throw the city in turmoil. That's because okay. I said so let's go around and that's a good point. Um, so Shakita, do you think that this process is worth uh, going through? Do you think that we should have a process for complaints? I think we still as as a council we should discuss the purpose make sure we have a clear understanding of what is the purpose of the ethic committee i think that is number one making sure that we have to, i just took a few notes making sure that we understand what the purpose of having it for i you know we may all have our own interpretations like to keep us from getting in trouble um making sure that no matter what i agree with you on the training we all should make sure we sh there should be training with um new people like even myself um and at the same time um understanding what the roads are okay so i think that's very important uh i'm not i think that that's first and foremost and how does that overlap with the, the uh robert's rules of order too um yeah i think we just need to define what the purpose of this committee the ethics committee uh, and that we all should, if we decide to do it, we need to make sure we all agree. Um, and then also making sure that just because someone does something wrong doesn't mean they don't get a second chance. Oh. Because we are human beings. I d I'm just saying, oh, you I know, and I, um, yeah. I just want to make sure it's not to like point fingers at people and it's like, okay, how do we train? How do we make this better, right? For the next, <laughs> for them and the next council person, counselor. Okay. So. I think first we need to, for me personally, I think we need to make sure we understand the exact purpose of this ethics committee. Okay. Um, Aaron. So I think I spoke to this when we talked about having this meeting, uh, that I think being a self-policing body is not particularly useful, especially with censure being the heaviest repercussion that we can dole out as a self-policing body. Um, so I think I think it's worth exploring uh, whether it's an ethics committee or just having somebody as I, you know, I've spoken with Harold about uh, former federal agents or former detectives or hearings officers having that kind of person instead of a committee. It's just a person who's completely uh, you know non-biased. So um, and also has investigative background uh, of some sort. So I think that's another option besides a committee, per se. Okay. Uh, I think that, you know, having things sent back to the city council can just fall right back into possible politicization of factions on council. And I, I think that there needs to be, uh, you know, if, if there's not the consequence of, of a hearings officer, whoever that, that uh, non-biased third party is, having the ability to say, have a recall, if say, I don't think anybody on this council is like that, but if we got George Santos and some he completely makes up their background and gets elected to city council, right? It's just not a screw, you know, just not not an outstanding individual, you know, that there's 
there's some sort of function to deal with that yeah. outside of because you hear it all the time from the public is that even if they wanted to many of them do realize how expensive it is to get somebody recalled and knowing that that might not even work in the first place and so i think a lot of the public is just is not interested in trying to recall people because of how expensive and how tedious that process can be you know? yeah. so, I don't know. I read something in the paper this morning. Wasn't there one to the other? Yes. <laughs> suggesting we all be recalled. Well, right. Oh, For doing something that's not in our power to do. Oh, that's a lot. It's that. Uh, so I, I, the, I, I do think we ought to be clear on if we're going to do this mm -hmm. on the so what question. And, I'm, uh, and I did read what you said, Anne. And, you know, I, I have, it provokes other questions for me about where does the authority start and end, you know, to and find should, somebody yeah. or for recalls um, and that kind of thing. Um, uh, so I, I honestly, I'm an agnostic on on the need or value of having uh, a committee. I, if, it were, if it were just Tim Waters, uh, and I felt like you know it was up to me, I, I would I would re, I would agree on the protocol would be to bring in a, a trial uh, an administrative trial judge, which are you know, I guess retired uh, former. Um, folks who sit on the bench who do this for a living, right? They conduct investigations and and make recommendations based on the law or whatever you know standards we have, just to simplify the process. Um, I, I think any of us, if, if if it's not if it's not clear now, then we ought to clarify in rules and procedures that if somebody believes there's been a breach, there is a protocol to follow, and we ought to be clear on what that protocol right. is. We don't have one, so. So, so <clears throat> for me, I've carried around. This is a, this is a you know, <coughs> version of the slide deck. It's dated uh, June tenth, two thousand fifteen. I've been carrying around for, for a long time. My dad told me, and one of these days, you know, maybe this will be useful. But it's off the CMO website. It's the you talk about training. This is their training, or it was then. It's probably been updated. Pretty good. If you look at the, if you look at the slide deck. Um, that kind of take you through the differences between what's an ethical breach versus a legal or moral, you know, uh, deviance or variation or whatever. Um, and the questions to ask, uh, you know, how to think about holding yourself accountable. It seems to me that, that in terms of a process, even before we get to a, a protocol, it would, be, it would be worth bringing in CML or somebody like that. I mean, this one is designed for city council members. Uh, and then see what kind of conclusions we might reach about um, how much farther to go, whether to think about uh, agreeing on a, on a protocol that would be triggered if there's a complaint and then an administrative trial judge. Um, Sean, I wasn't, when you made reference to, to keeping Harold clear of something, I wasn't certain what you were thinking about. You have some. I was just saying that uh, in the administrator, when they have uh, a, a an employee do something, uh, or a member of the council do something, whatever, or uh, the leadership team, uh, it, it's a re it has, a, like it or not, there's a reflection on, on the, the top person. So, you know, I, I want us to be proactive, and that's why I think every year, just like the school district, every employee, even the city council members, even though they've seen it, it's that. Um, so you're talking about training. Yeah, training. When they know. There's certain things that, of course, you're going to get uh, that you've been told. You signed off on it. You, you said you took the testing yeah. training. Or like that. You know that the idea of a standing committee. It's like I don't know. Mm -hmm. How often would a standing committee be utilized? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you know, in my experience, not very often, um, if ever. Uh, and then, if, if, if not that, then then the alternative is something like an administrative trial judge. Um, but at the end of the day, I do think the, 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 the so what is pretty limited, but it would be good to get a definitive answer to the question, what are the limits to an administrative trial judge or some board? That would be, I'd be curious to know what board would be authorized to recall an elected official, or is it to initiate a recall process? And then if there's a, if somebody has the authority to find, it's like, really? Uh, we don't find criminals these days. 
No, but those, you know, those are just things that other cities yeah, are doing. I know, I know. But, uh, but those are questions forward. that we would, yeah. I'd want to make certain we could answer before we got too far down the line with, with serious considerations. And the recall thing, you know, I talked to Eugene, um, the, the charter says we can censure. If we decided council wanted to recall, I do not want to do that. But uh, it would have to probably go to a vote uh, to, to amend the charter. And that's a heavy one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I uh, just to get the committee thing sort of out of the way, I really like uh, Aaron's idea of having it's like hiring an outside counsel. Mm -hmm. You hire an outside investigator. So that's something that I think we could put a pin in. Um, then you know, I read the long CML. Uh, CML ethics discussion that Eugene sent out, mm -hmm. which I thought was was brilliant, and I and I um, had to contrast that with the discussion we got uh, when we were new invested on council, which was you know basically don't have financial conflicts of interest. Well, we know we're not going to do that, mm -hmm. um, and the you know the the real temptation is violating the chain of command. And that's a real, I think, a, a danger for us um, because um, we are so sensible and so open about access to staff. You know, hey, Harold, I need to do, to do this. I need to understand more about this. Well, talk to Joni or talk to Dave or whoever, you know. Well, all it would take would be for somebody to um, misconstrue or the people got into uh, a, a, a difference of opinion or whatever to, to have it grow up in that way so um you know i always say i know i can't tell you what to do but here's my opinion or here's my question um but that still doesn't always mean that uh that the staff person doesn't get pressured and i really was not until we got into this aware of what big deal that can be so I, I, I agree with Sean that the first thing we should do is get everybody up to speed on, you know, there's probably four or five different types of ethical breaches, right? So, so um, uh, 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 getting into a, finan a financial conflict of interest is the biggest and worst, mm -hmm. and probably the chain of command thing is the second biggest. Um, and if you know awareness, maybe a little training on the part of the staff too. You know, give them a, a Harpo Marx horn that they can toot when they, they say we're crossing the line, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but seriously, I mean, not seriously, seriously. But but um, I think if we if we had you know um, draw the lines and make everybody aware of what they are, and then live with that knowledge for three or four months and then have a discussion about what the recourses ought to be um, with all of our raised awareness because it's five minutes till and so we're not going to settle it tonight we're not settling anything this is it uh, Susie. So, yeah um i do agree that we should have an outside person to um that would review the cases i think it pulls it away from that Politicization, politicization of um, you know just targeting someone or going after them and you know and really weeding out what is a frivolous and what is um, an actual what makes an actual case the other thing and you know i agree with sean on this one is the um, training piece i mean even if it's a little virtual you know here are the most extreme violations to here are you know you might get a hand slapped to you know, some of the minor, but be aware of, you know, just a really quick, and it should be something, you know, I, I agree that, you know, we could do it so annually, especially if it's a virtual thing. <laughs> Go in and, um, you know, watch the video and answer your questions. But, um, yeah, so I, I agree that in order for us to move forward, um, you know, I think, you know, making sure that everybody understands what what are these violations what are you know and, and we're all on the same the same understanding and that new people coming in and yes exactly understand where it's mm -hmm. going yeah 
So my my thing is that when someone, whether it's a council person or an outside person, accuses the council person of something, we can say you need to write a written documentation. Now, I like that what uh, uh, Colorado Springs did mm -hmm. is saying that you need to put it in writing and take it to um, this person or this board. Mm -hmm. And they then will let the accused person doesn't necessarily ever know they're being accused of anything. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, is wrong. Mm -hmm. And they should be able to respond to the accusation. Mm -hmm. And that's why I like the Colorado Springs one. They're getting given so that this is, you know, this is what you've been accused of. We'll give you two days to respond or a week, whatever. Um, and then that maybe it is a uh, conversation that they both sit down and have and it never rises to the to the you know rises to the top of having to having it blow up but if the whether it is a judge or whoever or two or three people i don't care that's what we have to decide then they can tell us counsel this is frivolous based upon this this rises that we need to investigate this based upon what your code of ethics is, uh, based upon what the law says, um, and so we are going to have uh, an investigation time. Um, I think having a council person accuse another council person without any way to have a discussion from the accused is wrong. It is just wrong. And um, then to have two or three council people decide what happens, we can't sell we can't self police that way because there are things that come into it. Trying to control a vote, you you want them off the council. Um, is it your moral ideal of of what should happen that is influencing that? Or is it actually legal, following your, your code of ethics? And I don't think that staff should be involved in policing counsel. They, ought to, they need to say you need to take this back over to the, uh, to the board or to the, you know, re write, refer it to the board. We do not solve counsel problems. Um, and then if it comes back to us, that's where the what? Was. So what comes in for me is that then if it's referred back to us, then so what? What does council do with it? Do we censure them publicly or privately? Do we take them off of boards if they want to be a liaison for a board? Um, those are the things that we need to decide. But I, I really think we need a procedure for complaints. Um, and who does that go to? So that's what I think we need to think about. Are we going to go, or are we going to drop this whole discussion? So we can't decide now. We should probably go have a council. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>